I got this circuit from a friend of mine, Barry Blood, on YouTube. And he sent me a circuit of a two-tone sine wave oscillator. And I tested it and, well, I'm absolutely sure that the original circuit worked. Though in my case it did not want to work. Anyway, this was the original circuit of the sine wave oscillator. I did do some minor changes. I added here an extra stage in the phase shift oscillator and I coupled out the signal uh, to the emitter and used a 1k resistor here to get here say uh, enough output voltage to the oscillator. So uh, this was more or less the definite circuit you see it. Um, and it's a very, very interesting circuit because only two uh, uh, silicon transistors are used. In many cases, you see when we are talking about sine wave oscillators, three transistors or four transistors. And the good thing about it. Uh, this also is that we have here an effective um, Darlington circuit. So a circuit with a very high current amplification combined with at the input the say the phase shift unit consisting of these three capacitors and these three resistors. Uh, important to tell, of course, is that when you change here the values of these uh, capacitors, the frequency will change. Completely logical. And here, when you change the values of these 347k potentiometers, also the frequency will change. And I have done that here more or less in an experimental way by bridging the first uh, resistor with a 10k potentiometer and I will demonstrate how that affects the sound. Also a very good uh, say property of this circuit is that when you heat up the capacitors the frequency immediately changes. Of course you can say well that's a bad property. No problem with that when you think so. Uh, but it shows that such a circuit is very healthy. So a properly working sine wave oscillator. Uh, now it works in the uh, maximum 1000 Hertz band. But of course you can say make the values of these capacitors smaller. Say to 4 and 7. Uh, 4700 picofarad or even uh, 1 nanofarad. And also you can change here the back coupling capacitor and one advice is use for the higher frequencies when you want to do experiments with this circuit. Use for these, these high frequencies a ceramic capacitor. Otherwise you cannot, will not get it working. So here uh, a way to change the frequency somewhat. The say the biggest frequency changes can be realized here by using other values in the phase shift uh, unit. And here you can also set the somewhat the uh, the frequency. This resistor, by the way, also proved to be somewhat critical. It's one mega ohm. I also tested 2 mega ohms. 1 mega ohm was more or less the best ID for this circuit. And here we have, of course, uh, the output. It's a coupling capacitor. Uh, in the original schematic of Barry, he used a 10 microfarad capacitor. I think you can use for 
higher frequencies also a 470 nanofarad non-polar capacitor and a resistor here say as a kind of decoupling uh, component anyway let's listen and see and look what this uh, oscillator can bring <coughs> always interesting to do all these kinds of experiments very very interesting I lift up the voltage now to 9 volts that was the original voltage for which the circuit was made let's look on the scope what that can bring lift up the amplification of the scope somewhat and here you see a quite good sine wave uh, by the way there is some distortion here but of course uh, don't worry too much about that um, has to do say uh, with all kinds of phenomenon in the circuit anyway now I'm gonna change this potentiometer perhaps it's visible it's quite dark now but anyway this potentiometer here 10k and it only varies one of the three uh, resistors that are responsible for the phase shift so it only has a tiny influence on the frequency and when you want to make a bigger influence on the frequency all these three resistors have to be changed at the same time but anyway let's try 10k potentiometer here let's listen and see so oh and now I will change the potentiometer interesting of course and uh, the, the waveform stays quite pure don't expect too much of such a simple circuit that that's one of my advices but you can surely use it for all kinds of uh, 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 electronic test circuits etc what I do now here is change this potentiometer that is here in the circuit here and now turning that what 10k potentiometer here and I have a purpose soldered here in a 1k uh, uh, fixed value resistor otherwise uh, the transistor here could get a too high base current say when we have here a uh, direct connection between the positive and the base of that second transistor the transistor will die immediately without any uh, without anything it will directly uh, die so that's the reason why I use this 1k here this 1k series resistor in uh, the in this lead here anyway let's listen again it's a very good circuit by the way um, well I have to do that with my hand I don't have a screwdriver at the moment well yes here I have it so here you see distortion surely you will see here a kind of distortion don't worry too much uh, that can be cured but uh, of course we have to do with a sine wave oscillator and a sine wave oscillator is in fact a very critical circuit where say the amplification must be hold 
very properly under control. Otherwise you get these kinds of distortions here. This, these kinds of distortions. Uh, well, given the simplicity of the circuit, I think it is a very good circuit. So, thanks to Barry Blood again for giving this ID. And well, I think it's a very useful circuit, ways which you can do many experiments, and not only experiments, you can work this whole circuit out to a properly working uh, 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz sine wave oscillator. And some ideas, of course, how to do that. Uh, make a road use a rotary switch here with which you can set say three capacitors at the same time say one nanofarad 10 nanofarad and 100 nanofarad use uh, this setup to uh, say get tiny influences say, say a fine tuning of the sine wave and furthermore there's not not so much more to tell and of course you can use this the whole circuit as a properly working sine wave oscillator on a fixed frequency and when you want to operate it on a fixed frequency you can optimize the circuit say by doing some changes minor changes by the way in the value of this resistor here one mega ohm and this resistor here and this resistor here when you want to optimize it for a very specific frequency on a certain uh, sine wave these are say the components that have to be studied thanks for watching and well very good idea uh, from Barry Plot to send me this schematic thanks